So can we get GPT-4 to solve and efficiently pass fan coding interviews from like Google, Microsoft, Meta, or Facebook? And I'm actually gonna also put it into the test of to see if the solutions are good enough and we get tested on leak code and see if the solutions provided by GPT-4 are well optimized and memory efficient and see how they does compared to other people's solutions. So to actually put GPT-4 into the test, so I'm gonna try to go through the FANG interview questions or FANG coding interview questions and try to give them to GPT-4 and see how they can score on leak code. So I'm gonna use this awesome group pastor in here that has actually a bunch of bunch of interview questions from different fan companies like Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook or Meta and so on and so forth. And actually take those and most of them are just gonna be leak code coding challenges. So I'm gonna try like to take some of these coding challenges and actually put them and give them to GPT-4 and see how it does. And because GPT-4 now is like has more reasoning, more conciseness compared to the like previous is default GPT 3.5 and so on and so forth. Even though the speed isn't that much, but it's doing a lot, a lot better. And yeah, so actually you can go ahead and give it those interview questions and see how it does by providing it later on like to leak code for testing it and, and submitting it and comparing it to actual solutions of other people, like the top rated or top voted solutions and see how it does compared to like memory management, how fast it is, how efficient and optimized it is. So let's start with an easy coding challenge from Amazon in here, for example, so if I search for the climbing stairs challenge, so um, I can do climbing stairs challenge. So I can go ahead and, so the minimum climbing stairs or the minimum cost climbing stairs challenge is actually a very easy one. Um, like it is actually provided with a lot of companies, like pretty much they, they start with this most of the times. So this is actually a pretty simple one where you can like give it an integer array cost where each element inside of the array is actually the cost of like going through the staircase. And once you pay the cost, you can actually climb one or two steps. And this is actually just a quick example. When you give it like this cost, it just gives you like the output in here and, and that's pretty much it. So if we can just go ahead and copy this the same as it is and actually provide or give it like an as an input to GPT-4 and see if this actually can crack the coding interview in here or not. So what I'm gonna do in here is actually copy everything in here as well as I'm gonna copy the two examples in here. So just they can know exactly what's happening and copy the constraint. So I literally just copy everything throughout this answer in here. And it just, let's use in here, the acceptance rate for this answer is actually 63% with submissions of 1.2 millions and accepted 779K. So that means this, this challenge or this coding challenge is quite easy, but still pretty frequent in fan coding interviews or coding interviews in general. So if we go back to GPT-4 and actually paste the same import like we copy there, the same coding challenge, kind of like constraints, examples, and the body of it and just go ahead and click enter in this and let's see how actually how this can do compared to like how everything works. So you can solve this problem using dynamic programming. I already figured it out. So here's the Python function that finds the minimum cost to reach the top of a floor. So, so instead of doing it in Python, I wanted to ask GPT-4 to do it in JavaScript and also make sure the program is optimized and memory efficient. So if you click on this as well, so this go ahead and actually convert that instead of doing Python because most of the times it's gonna do it in Python because that's like the easiest, like programming language, of course. And that's what most coding challenges are actually about, actually Python and everything, because it's pretty easy. It's pretty much everywhere. But in JavaScript here, it's basically you can have it the same way. Uh, for example, minimum cost climbing stairs. And if I look into this stuff, let's so say main, minimum cost climbing stairs in here. So if I go back to JavaScript, so look at the lead code JavaScript thing in here. That's pretty much the same thing, the same function that takes cost and returns and GPT-4 is actually, there you go. So the solution is a complexity of O and N and space complexity of O1, which is pretty good in terms of space efficiency. So that's pretty nice. So if I go here and copy this whole function as it is, go back to lead code in here and actually paste the same function in here and go ahead and do run. So let's see how this is actually gonna do compared to all of those. So just for you to better see that, let's go see case one and case two, both passed in. So whatever it was tested in here or the test cases in here, both of the test cases are passing. So that's good. So let's go ahead and try to submit this one and see how it does compare it to other submissions from other people. So the runtime is 67 milliseconds. It beats 60% of everybody else. That's mind blowing. Uh, memory in here beats 50, like 57% of 
already. But that's pretty cool. I, I absolutely love that. To take it to the next level, I'm going to ask GPT-4 to convert this solution into a C program that is super optimized, fast, and memory efficient. So if I click on this and wait for this to actually optimize and basically give us the imp output in here. So it takes in consideration to make this optimized, fast, and memory efficient. So if I go back in here and actually copy the two functions in here, this is actually the main function. This is just a helper function. So go back in here, choose C. Uh, I'm going to paste the same thing in here. First, I'm going to run the simple test cases in here to see if it works. There you go. So the two case test cases actually passed. And if I go, go ahead and submit that. Wow. So that's a bummer. So for the runtime in here, it takes four milliseconds compared to the JavaScript one, which took 67 milliseconds. That's because it's C. That's pretty nice. And GPT-4 was actually go ahead and able to convert the code in here between JavaScript and C and actually also made sure that it creates an efficient code that can run efficiently in terms of runtime and memory. Wow, I'm, I'm surprised at that. Now, if we go into a little bit more medium sort of like question in here, this is actually from Google. So there's actually the Google top 50 questions that are frequent in coding challenges. There's actually time needed to inform all employees. So if you go to this, go to lead code, um, this is actually a medium one. So if you look into the statistics of this one, there's actually a chance of almost 60% passing this one and submissions of like 220,000. So this is a little bit more harder kind of coding challenge and question in general, because it has a lot of stuff it actually like deals with like managers that has employees and delivery news and all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of like a tree in here. This is actually how you can basically visualize it in your head. It's actually how you can work with it. And it has actually a bunch of constraints in here and how they work. And the problem that we need to solve here is actually you have gone ahead like a like a boss a ceo that wants to just go ahead and inform urgent news to every employee in the company throughout their managers so how can you do that so this is basically what the thing in here actually going on and what the problem is about so simply i'm just going to go ahead and copy it all in here um i'm not sure about the image but i'm going to copy until here i'm going to go here so go all the way down paste what i have got i'm going to get back in and actually paste the second example i got out of here so for the input and as well as I'm, I'm not going to need like I need to paste the constraints as well. So uh, constraints, constraints are actually very important. Otherwise, like GPT-4 is not going to generate the right program or the right solution for you uh, with like some edge cases not being covered really well. So make sure to copy the right constraints in here. Otherwise, it's going to fail with you miserably. All right. So let's go into this one. Click enter and let GPT-4 does the job. So it knows already that we're going to be using depth first search or the DFS in here to traverse the tree. And it knows that it's actually like a you know a tree structure and it basically forgot to tell that oh you need to generate a well optimized and memory efficient javascript program so click enter and let's see if they actually can do that for us so there you go it gave us actually the function that we need in here so if i get back in to like all the needed managers problem so if i get back to lead code in here actually choose javascript i can go in and paste all the code that i copied i don't need those console logs they're actually just used for testing and i can go in and do run so from the first slide both of the test cases in here were accepted case one and case two and he got the right output in here for it so it works absolutely fine so let's go ahead and try to submit this one and see how it does compared to other solutions from other people so first memory in here is like 77 megabytes and it beats around 54 percent of other solutions so that's great uh for the runtime as well it beats 42 percent so that's absolutely awesome as well so let's go ahead and try to basically ask the gpt for oh can you or basically you must optimize this even more and the program has has to have less runtime and less memory usage, otherwise the solution will not be accepted. And I, for example, I can do, oh, and I will not pass the test. Okay, click enter and see if this actually go ahead and generate for us a better solution. I mean, obviously there's actually a better solution because other people in here actually are beating us already. Like, so we need to make sure that, oh, GPT-4, can you do that for us? So what it tells us in here, oh, by removing the agency list. So it tells us, oh, by removing the agency list and iterating directly over the manager array, this should reduce the memory usage and potentially improve runtime so let's see if this actually gonna go ahead and do it improve the actual runtime or memory so I'm gonna copy this function um, go back in here and then select everything and click enter uh, run in here just to make sure that it's actually the right one and click
quick submit and see if it's actually going ahead and improve it even further. And bummer. So apparently this solution didn't actually make it, actually failed uh, the rest five test cases in here. So time limit exceeded. So whenever you try to do that, it actually took so long to finish for this particular number. So yeah, this isn't, this isn't really the great solution, but you can basically go back to GTPT4 and actually go back and forth and ask him and, and basically provide more input and say, oh, you have time limit exceeded. You can provide the example in here of manager and inform time. I'm pretty sure GPT-4 will be able to help you through that. But from like the first try, this isn't working as you would anticipate it to do. Now, let's go to try a different question now from Microsoft, which is going to be a very hard question compared to the questions we had before. So it's actually the Skyline problem. So the Skyline problem here is actually a very relatively hard problem compared to the prior two we had before. So this is basically like determining where what, you have a city and you want to determine the skyline of the city by joining all the kind of like skylines or all of the buildings together. So you can get the silhouettes formed by all the buildings in that city when viewed from a distance. So to better understand this, I'm pretty sure this is actually a very complicated. It has a lot of info in here, a lot of details. So to better understand this, you can just quickly look at the example over here where there's actually the skyline and this is the like expected output we have from our program. So we need to give it like the builders in here. It actually draws all the skylines in here using points. As could just make some one block in here by joining all the edges, basically where all the skylines actually meets and join. And it just basically gives you that one single line that basically joins all the builders in here to create the skyline view. And this actually a very hard one because a lot of, not a lot of people were bait and as you the acceptance rate in here is actually only 41%. So there isn't a lot of people who are succeeding in here, like almost like a half a million like submissions for this and only accepted is like almost half of this one. So yeah, so let's go ahead and try this one. I'm going to go ahead and copy everything that you see in here. Uh, the example, I'm just going to stop it as we did before. So I'm going to copy this one. And if I go back, I'm going to copy the example as well both first example and second example, this will actually tell GPT-4 what the input is actually expected, uh, what is the expected output and so on and so forth. So if I go ahead and do example and paste that one in, uh, so I can just go ahead and do click enter and see if it's actually going to go ahead and do it. And at the end in here, I have to add like, so after giving it the whole kind of like body of the coding challenge in here. So at the end in here, I need to, oh, you need to solve this JavaScript program that needs to be a runtime optimized and memory efficient. Do your best. So click enter. And there you go, GPC-4 has finished. So what it did for us, it created for us a max heap class. So it kind of like created a heap data structure for us that can basically manage a heap to basically later on use it. So this is actually the class. Now, instead of the main function, it goes and uses that heap in here. It actually does all the calculations. It only does one, it doesn't do any nested loops, which is pretty good. So that means it only does an O of N. So it doesn't like an O of N squared or something. So that's actually a pretty good time complexity. And yeah, so let's go ahead and try this one. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the whole code from here, go back to this column problem, make sure you choose JavaScript and paste that one in. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete the test is in here and go ahead and do a run. So, and it already gave us an error. So let's create in here, active highs dot remove is not a function. So if you look into this deeper, it tries to use that active highs, which is a max heap class. It uses remove and I'm pretty sure remove doesn't exist because I was looking at the code before. So it only has pop. So instead of doing remove, it should be pop. So GPT-4, come on. So that was an easy thing, but yeah. So it should do pop. I think pop is like, yeah, pop, P-O-P. -P. Okay. So doing the run again, uh, hopefully this time goes well. There you go. Uh, it gave us a wrong answer already. And like one test case passed and the second test case or the first test case actually doesn't pass. So let's try to provide this image Put and say, Jet chat GPT, can you please fix this one? Um, so let's get back in here. So I'm just going to copy paste the same result we got. I'm going to say, oh, the program didn't pass the test cases. Can you please fix it and make sure it works? So I click enter. And basically, that's basically understandable because that kind of coding challenge is super hard. It's actually the hardest coding challenges. So yeah, I'm not surprised that GPT-4 wasn't able to basically get it from the first time, maybe. And it failed some test cases. So I completely understand that one. But yeah, let's go ahead and see if this is basically going to be the same thing or not. Oh, so he's telling us already 
I missed adding the remove method to the max heap class. So I was, I'm, I'm the bad boy in this one because I tried to replace the remove method with a pop method. So that was actually my bad in here because it, it, like I missed adding that method in here and it should work now as far as this says. So let's get back into this. I'm gonna select everything. I'm just gonna paste the whole code in here. I don't need you test cases. And um, yeah, so let's go and try this one, uh, get skyline and everything. So I'm gonna run the first test cases in here and see the results and another bummer. So this is actually failed for this one. Uh, it got pretty much everything else working or correctly, but this one got it undefined at this nine instead of 12. So yeah, so I, I tried to copy the same thing in here and I said, oh, can you please fix it? And I'm gonna click enter and see if this is uh, gonna be able to fix that for us. Okay, so it gave us an updated get skyline function. So let's get back in here and only update that get skyline function. So this is the function. I'm gonna just select everything, paste that one in and click run. So let's see if this is actually gonna do better than the previous one. There you go, it works now. It gives us the right test case for both case one and case two. So uh, yeah, so it's actually time for us to go ahead and submit. So hopefully, I hope this doesn't actually go ahead and blow for us and it just works perfectly. Please. Hey, and there you go. Hallelujah. So we got that one accepted and actually working fine. But the bummer for this one is this runtime is horrible. It only beats 5%. And the memory in here is actually very horrible as well. It beats only 5% as well. So yeah, it gives you a like a solution that works after a couple of tries after exactly three tries, like going back and forth between the solution and GPT-4. But it doesn't exactly work as efficiently as you would anticipate. So I'm going to get back to GPT-4 here ask it to convert this into a C program that is well optimized, memory efficient, and that can actually pass the leak code coding challenge. So it gave us a first solution in here, but later on it had to ask it to follow the same structure provided by leak code in here. So to make sure like the function that gets called in leak code is pretty much the same function that GPT-4 is gonna be generating. So this is the final code in here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one, get back to leak code, select everything and just paste this one and click run. So let's go and see if this is actually gonna do a good job. And there you go. So it gave us both of the test cases from the first try in here actually working fine, case one and case two. That's a pretty promising. Let's go and submit and see if this is well optimized. And there you go. That's a bummer. So it tells us a runtime error and it cannot load an address with an insufficient space for an object of type int. So apparently this is actually a memory issue that like didn't um, allocate the pointers correctly for C or something. If you're familiar with C and you know what it means. So I'm basically gonna say, oh, it giving me a runtime error. This is the error. This is the input for the error. So I'm simply gonna just say, oh, GPT-4, it gives, it's basically giving me a runtime error. This is basically the error and this is the input. Can you please go ahead and fix that for me? So let's see if is will be able to do that for us. Okay, so it looks like it fixed that. It looks like actually knew exactly what the problem was. So it tells us, oh, the issue is with the maximum height value and we need to move this into more of like a dynamic allocate memory. So yeah, let's go ahead and try this one and see if actually does fix the problem. So I'm gonna get back, copy paste this one, run the first test cases just to make sure. All right, both the test cases are passing. Now let's go ahead and submit this one. And yet another bummer. So it's creating another runtime error with a different error in here. And it's basically all of them like memory sort of errors, like sometimes out of the bound or something. So yeah, um, I don't know, but I'm not gonna go ahead and get back to GPC-4. You can do that by yourself and actually try it out a couple of times to get this working. But apparently we got one JavaScript actually working that's pretty good. Now the C implementation is more tricky. Yes, it deals more about memory and stuff like that. It's more like a little bit more harder. I completely understand like GPT-4 is like having troubles just giving the perfect, well-optimized and efficient solution for you. But obviously like you can easily get it done in here after trying a couple of more times and providing more inputs into it. So anyway guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and love this type of videos. Let me know if you like this GPT-4 type of videos. I can do more for you. So anyway, Anyway guys, thank you guys for watching, catch you hopefully 